thoughts and reflections on uh, a pretty unbelievable comeback for your group tonight? Yeah, no, uh, resilient. You know, the, the, the guys picked that word. And that was probably the word tonight, a little resilient. I thought we were playing pretty good, even though it was four to one. Hung in there. That's really what it comes down to, hanging in there and, you know, trying to, obviously, Lindy, that Lindy goal to make it four to two made a, a lot of people, hey, there's a, sh there's a shot. So, yeah. How about Archer's resilience in particular after a couple that he might like back to hang in there and help you guys see it the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I mean, you know, goaltending, it's, you know, sometimes it's going to, things are going to go your way sometimes in the game and you got to hang in there. And that's what he did tonight. Rick, I know a win's a win, but sometimes some of them should be capitalized. You mentioned you're down 4-1, yet you played so well 5-on-5. Five five. You limit them to just six shots. Does this one have deeper meaning for the guys in the room, and does it reinforce what you're doing and add additional comp confidence heading the rest of the way? Yeah, like I told you guys, every game is different, and it's one game. you got you got to think that way. So tonight, obviously, we like the way we defended, but it's um, it's one game at a time. Um, you know, you make adjustments, both sides will make adjustments, but I thought uh, for the, you know, all year we've, you know, we're a good defending team. And I think when you, we, we have something to fall back if things don't go our way. And that's, that's our foundation. Does your team impress you in different ways, night after night? Yeah, I, I think all year, um, like I said, it's a resilient group. <clears throat> sometimes we're not pretty, um, sometimes, Things happen, but I, I just feel like uh, it's a real close group, you know. And this is when you need a close group, you know, in these situations. I, and I thought everybody did something they'd contribute. You know, we, I don't think we had any passengers tonight. Rick, I know you liked a lot of the different facets of your game, but when you look at the last 25 minutes or so, <clears> you mentioned uh, the Lindholm goal. But what, when do you think the tide really started to turn? That's a good question. I, I don't know. I think uh, <clears throat> you know when you, you make it four to two, um, they, you know, they had a couple. Of, waves at us. I thought we handled their waves pretty good. I think that sometimes gives you confidence and, um, you know, you, it boosts you on the other end, I guess. Um, it wasn't like, you know, we scored and then they were all over us again for long stretches. It was just, and I'm not saying we're all over them. I'm just saying we're, we we just believed in, you know, if we get that next goal to make it 4-3, you never know. It's just, I, I don't know what tide, what uh, what part turned the tide, to be honest with you. Um, because there was just the little small moments everywhere. And was that something you guys mm. talked about? <clears throat> Get that next one and, and we're in business? Yeah, no, we talked about it. Uh, I said to him after it was four to one, I said, you know, it's not, like, don't get frustrated. It's not that bad. We don't have to push all our chips. And I thought we were pretty good. So I think that's the key. Uh, it wasn't a lot of guys hanging their heads. Coaches weren't yelling, screaming. I didn't think it was that bad. I thought we were pretty good. So I think that's the key. Rick Zadorov. Had his fingerprints all over this one. A few big hits early. <clears throat> got the tying goal. Just sit on the winning goal. Just how much does he mean to this group right now? Yeah, I think Z, um, you know, how I feel about him. It's just his, uh, you know, as much obviously on the ice, he's, he just had a hell of a playoffs for us. But his locker room, you know, you guys don't see the stuff that he does. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a leader, but he's also a funny guy. Like, he keeps guys loose. Like, and he's, even on the bench with me, like, he says some stuff from your, and the, and the pressure's on, and somehow he says something. I, I chuckle. You know, it's like four minutes. You know, it's high game, and something he said. Something I can't remember. He said I was laughing, but um, he's um, he's obviously a, a huge ac uh, acquisition for us uh, on and off the ice. We talked about your defense as a team earlier, but specifically against McDavid, you guys had an, an advantage mm -hmm. on shot attempts, an advantage mm -hmm. on scoring chances. How were you able to limit him as well as you did five on five? <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I thought we were pretty good in the neutral zone. I thought we did a good job of gapping up. Um, you know, he's going to get his looks. You know, he we know it. You know, we just got to make sure we just limit some of his uh, his rush chances. You've talked about the importance of the shift after a goal, either for <laughs> or against. Uh, you seem to be getting some good shifts from the Lindholm line in particular <clears throat> after a goal. They, they get the quick goal after. What about them makes them such a good line to keep that momentum going? Well, I think if you look, Gars is a good four checker. Um, him and Dak together. Uh, so, anytime you can get that, you know, get that four check and keep the puck in their end after uh, a goal, even a goal against, like it, it kind of stops momentum. They're they're, they're good at kind of keeping them either keeping the momentum or stop the momentum. That line does a good job. I think it's because they're four checking. You know, obviously Gars is a 
does a good job of getting on the, on, on the four chicken deck. And obviously, Lindy had a monster game for us. I don't know what he was in the dots tonight. Was he 14? It was 14 for four or something. I mean, that's, that's huge for us. And you also talked a lot about the importance of holding on to pucks and not throwing yeah. them away. You kind of saw both sides of that, whether yeah. it's Ian Cole on the rush <clears throat> throwing a puck away or you've got Dakota and Teddy holding on to pucks and assisting on goals. Uh, did, did you emphasize that even more <clears throat> going into those final periods, uh, trying to <clears throat> get them to keep? holding on to pucks? Yeah, we, we, we've talked about it before the series. We talked about it uh, in the June periods. You got to hold pucks. You got to be able to, you know, if you don't even have anything, sometimes it's okay just to hold a puck in a battle situation. Uh, we get in trouble when we throw pucks away. And um, there was some some good times when we did hold it, like you said, on those goals. But we just got to keep with that mentality. It's hard to do, but it's, uh, and it's, it wears on you because, uh, you know, you're going to get hit, you're going to battle, you got to move your feet. It's taxing, but if everybody does it, I think it's winning hockey. Rick, through some of the biggest moments that your club's had over <clears> the last two weeks, <throat> there's been a lot of shots of <clears throat> the bench and your team goes nuts and you're pretty stoic. Uh, but it looked like <laughs> post-game tonight you were pretty excited. Uh, what was different about this moment? I don't know. It's usually not me. I'm usually pretty, yeah, you're right. I, I don't even know if I cheered when Lindy had that overtime goal in Nashville. I don't know. It's just, I just like the demeanor of the guys. I just, I don't know, just let it out. I don't know. I just like the way these guys came back, you know, resilient. But like I said, it's you know, game one, you know. I actually don't like seeing that, me doing that, to be honest with you. I really don't. Not game one. So, with find, find fun or something. I got to do something. <laughs> with. Regards to your first period, you know, you've probably said it every day since you um, advanced. Don't want to take any penalties. Don't want to take any penalties. And then you probably have two close calls plus the too many men on the first yeah. uh, shift. Um, are you, are, uh, what do you take from that? And what did you take in general from how your club managed <coughs> the emotions of a first period where maybe it took you a few minutes to, yeah. to sort of find your way into the game? Well, it's obviously, you know, it's not a penalty of too many men. Um... And then when they scored the power play goal, it's like here we go, you know. I, you know, and I, I thought, I didn't really feel guys are like, uh, you know, here we go because you know obviously the story is their power play is unreal, and we just gave them the first minute of power play so and they score a power play goal so, it could have been disastrous. So we're gonna give the guys credit, kind of hanging in there. The narrative of this postseason for you is just it's been getting these contributions, but how much is tonight sort of help you and your staff underscore that point of like not only is it important to get those contributions, but this is the blueprint not only for how you beat a team in one game or a team like the Oilers, but this is just how you win in the postseason in general. Yeah, I think it's just been a, a gradual since training camp. Every day preaching it, guys buying in, working at it. Um, and then when you're successful doing it, you know, there's obviously more buy-in and guys – feel good about what we're doing. So, I mean, it's all players. I mean, they they, uh, they understand, you know, how we got to play, you know, whether it's Canuck hockey, um, and we got to continue that mode. And um, that's really what it comes down to. Can it be difficult to keep your, for the group to keep its composure when you give up <clears throat> essentially two goals, real quick ones against the run of play that make it 4-1? <clears throat> yeah, no, 100%. Um, maybe uh, four or five months ago, or maybe last year, you, you might have seen some frustration, some laziness or or something to frustrate us uh, take a bad penalty um, if you look at it I mean, when they're four to one I thought we still stayed disciplined you know uh, we weren't pinching uh, you know we weren't selling the selling the farm and I think that's maturity of the you know of the year how we've kind of built uh, our resolve as you mount the comeback the crowd is going bonkers yeah. is it, do you feel like it helped your group <clears throat> tilt the ice I thought when we made it four to two, the crowd was really loud. I thought, I think that helped the, the, the I think the fans helped. I, I definitely, the fans helped us tonight, but that four two goal, I thought that, you know, I mean, they're still up four to two, but that bil uh, building was really loud. Obviously when he scored four, four or five, that, that was huge. But I think the four two goal kind of gave us a little bit of energy. The, the crowd gave us energy on the four to two goal for sure.